name's Anthony Brown. I'm the CEO of Amped Technologies. Um, this is the vision statement right here. What we are is a next-gen next gen infrastructure company. So as far as eSports is concerned, and that's certainly one of the areas that we address, think of it as picks and shovels for eSports, the actual underlying infrastructure required to run these things properly. So a little bit of history. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Seven Group, started back in 2000. 2004, we started to get into the digital media industry, started working with animation, visual effects, and video game studios. By 2008, we had somewhere between 70 and 80% market share in Canada for building out animation and visual effects uh, studios and game studios. And that included all the big names, EA, Ubisoft, Activision, um, uh, Technicolor, Universal, Disney. These were all customers of, of uh, Seven Group. Uh, around 2012, we decided to get on the other side of the glass, and we brought Seven Group into a new company called Infinite Game Publishing, and we actually learned how to publish our own video games. In, in fact, we were Canada's first online video game publisher, Infinite Game Publishing. We published a game called MechWarrior Online, super popular game, cover of PC Gamer twice, rated number 19 in the top 25 games of all time. Uh, and had great success with that. And what Amped is, is actually the culmination of those two experiences. Having built out high performance compute infrastructure for digital media companies, and then having published a multiplayer AAA esports game ourselves, it makes us kind of uniquely qualified to be able to build this new internet infrastructure. So, how do you compare? What is Amped? You know, how does it compare to the Amazons and the Googles and Azures of the world? So if you look at Commodity Cloud, that's the guy pulling his hair out on the left. It's software switched, software firewalled, distributed storage. They build big 100,000 square foot data centers that have to service very large geographic areas, and all of those things cause latency. Now latency is that thing that, that your kids complain about, measured in milliseconds. You know, I got a 60 millisecond ping, that's why I lost the game. Well, we address that. Right? In, if you look at places like uh, Seoul, Korea, where you have 30 million people, the same population of Canada, all in one city, they have gigabit to the house. Chances are the server they're playing on is in the basement. Right? That's not the case in North America and Europe. The closest uh, Amazon is in California, AWS. The closest Azure is in Seattle. Right? So if you're playing on one of those platforms, you're already challenged with last mile latency, let alone having a distributed compute platform. So it's not just for video games. Video games is very important and eSports is very important. They need this stuff and they're one of the first guys feeling the pinch. But that's not the only thing that it's good for. Uh, it's also good for digital media production. So remote render, how they make movies and television shows is by rendering render farms, these large compute farms that crunch all of the data and actually spit out the end result, your film or your television show. In fact, we can announce uh, as of last week, uh, we just signed our first uh, customer on to the Amped Render Service, uh, Bardell Animation. Uh, and uh, so now all of the remote render for Bardell is done on the Amped um, uh, High Performance Compute Cloud Service. Um, and then the next thing is Industry 4.0. Um, the, the, with Industry 4.0, we're dealing with animate, um, um, uh, manufacturing, things like virtual reality, digital twinning, AI and machine learning. Again, all those applications require that low latency infrastructure that needs to uh, be deployed to be able to run that stuff. So we did a little comparison here between Google and Amped as far as what you're paying for and how much it costs and what you get. Now with Google Cloud, you're dealing with something called a preemptible instance. That means you can start a job in Google and some next guy comes along and kicks you off and the job doesn't get completed. That's called a preemptible instance. That's the cheapest way to buy services from Google for Google Cloud. And that comes in at one cent per vCPU hour um, with, with about three and three quarters of a gig of RAM associated with that vCPU. So we compared that with, with Amped. And if you take a look at the bottom line numbers there, $215,000 a month is what it would cost you to run 20,000 vCPUs with Google. We're at, and I can't see the number from here, it's about $150,000 a month, $160,000 a month. Um, drastically less money for a dedicated fiber connected service that is 3x to 5x more performant than Google Cloud. So what's the differentiators? How do we get to market? 
Um, I, should, I should mention at this point that we're going public next month. Uh, the prospectus has been filed. I can't give you any um, uh, financial performa information for the next little while until we're public. Uh, the round is closed. We can't take any, any more financing in. We raised $3 million, very low amount. We, we went with a small valuation, low dilution. Uh, we have a lot of announcements we get to make as soon as we go public. That's when we'll start to do the bigger raises. So uh, unfortunately, we can't take anybody's money at the moment, uh, but we will be uh, live on the CSC uh, next month. Um, so community and ecosystem, I'm a founding member of the Digital Technology Supercluster. I sit on the board and on the executive committee. We're a founding member of the, uh, or founding sponsor of the Cube, which is a local VR shared office. Um, we, we're members with the uh, with founding sponsor of the Animation VFX Alliance. Uh, we're doing a project for called the Creative Technology Community with the Capilano University, where they donated a building to us uh, for us to build out this new shared um, industry and. Um, um, uh, uh, industry and academia collaboration around digital media and digital storytelling. Uh, so very, very deep interaction with the community and also having run Seven Group for a dozen years uh, with pretty much every major player uh, as a customer, we have a very deep roots in the digital media community. Um, position within the supercluster is significant. There's only 14 founding members of the digital technology supercluster and we sit in that group. Uh, it's like sitting at the board of the Illuminati table. We've got GE and TELUS and Microsoft and Tech Mining and all these guys sitting around the table and little old amped. But we're kind of the IT infrastructure company for the supercluster. They like to call us the IT department for the supercluster. Um, socially conscious technology, that's very important to us. As you look at the proliferation of all this data, all the compute that's required to, to process that data, we've seen this during the crypto craze, that's a lot of energy, that's a lot of heat that gets exhausted into the air. What we do in our data center is we build sustainable data centers that capture the heat from all the servers, put it into water and heat the surrounding building. In fact, with a large data center, we become a municipal utility and heat uh, several buildings surrounding the area. On the CapU campus, we'll heat the entire campus with one data center. We also create clean drinking water from the condensing systems that cool all these servers. Uh, so you get resiliency built right into your smart city when there's an AMP data center there. So, you know, as I mentioned, we're not dealing just with esports. Esports is important. Esports is a big player, and they're the first guys feeling the pinch of latency. But it applies to all kinds of things IoT, big data, AI, machine learning. I'm not going to read them all, but we're involved in all of those verticals, and it applies across the board. So there's a, a picture of the uh, uh, first data center that we have. This is the building it's in. It's called the Waterfall Building. That waterfall in front of the building is partly uh, data center water captured from the, uh, from the data center. The uh, one on the right, that is the data corridor that we're building at the Capilano University campus, uh, where they're, we're gonna get the water we create there, of course, because it is a university, is going to be used for data center beer, because, you know, it's a university. Um, a little bit on the market very quickly. Um, you know, and really what we're looking at here is public cloud infrastructure and how quickly it's growing. So if you take a look at the stats from 2019 at 106 billion, uh, it doesn't take very long for it to get all the way up to almost $200 billion. It's very gr fast growing uh, industry. We have a lot of data that we're gonna have to deal with. We have a lot of compute we're gonna have to deal with. And uh, there's, it's a wave that nobody can stop at this point. A uh, little bit on the leadership. My name, Anthony Brown, I already mentioned. I'm the CEO of the company. We actually have James Hursthouse right here in the crowd, our chief strategy officer, 20 years in the industry, uh, actually was the CEO of, um, of uh, Roadhouse Interactive, a big 180-person studio here in Vancouver, and also was executive director of DigiBC, the local industry association. And then we have Don Buston, our CTO. He was the CTO at IGP and the guy who designed that infrastructure that we ran MechWarrior online line on. So pretty uniquely qualified when it comes to being able to build the type of things that we need to run these esports games in North America and Europe. So the current status, our first data center is up and operational. We already have customers in it. Uh, it's over on, uh, it's on uh, in that uh, waterfall building over on West 2nd. 
Um, we're in the process of listing on the CSE. In fact, as I mentioned, we're our financing is closed. Uh, we, uh, the prospectus is submitted and will be public uh, next month, so long as everything goes well with the BCSE and the CSE. Um, that's going to give us the initial working capital we need and give us a little bit of time to give some of the big announcements that I'd love to tell you about right now, but I'm going to wait until October uh, to start mentioning uh, about the customers that we have and the, um, and the, the strides that we've made. Uh, helps to bring the stock price up and that's when we'll start doing a little bit larger raises. So we're here on this trip trying to you know, raise uh, awareness of, about AMPT, uh, point out the fact that we will be public next month, uh, and to get ready to, uh, to come in. The initial uh, offerings at 35 cents is what we'll be opening at. Uh, total 44 million shares uh, outstanding when we go public.